welcome to Georgie's Gun Dogs at Trails for Tales Dog Training. Um, hello everyone, hope you're all well. Um, again, thank you again to new subscribers. Thank you for all the comments. Like I said, it's really nice seeing everybody um, training. I've had some videos, which has been good um, from people, which has been really great. So again, keep it up guys. And it's just great that like a little community building people are out there they're getting out with the dogs they're having fun with them and also they're learning for whatever journey they're doing with their dog um so it's really nice to hear right so this is quite a brief video but it's still an important one because majority of you will drive so it uh is important um that we learn car control um and this is whether you're going for a walk or whether you're going to shoot you don't want that dog to think as soon as the boot opens or as soon as the crate opens that they fly out because there are times example and shoot sometimes we don't always pull have private areas to pull up or sometimes we don't we have certain areas that we might be on the side of a road somewhere or a lane or something and we have to get the dogs out safely we don't want them rushing out so even on when you're turning up to test or trial days you don't want to be that person with the dog that you're battling and you know you just want that dog to come out nice and calm on the lead or if in a safe area you can do it off lead i personally think it should be on lead when it's even especially when it's going to go working comes out the car it can sit with you take a minute not drag you everywhere not pull off everywhere and be calm but also you should be able to open that crate door and the dog doesn't fly out either if you wanted to like open it up you should be able to walk around it and the dog would still remain there okay I also build a lot of value in the car as well because we might as well talk about the car as well because some people say to me they struggle getting the dogs in the car so from day one with puppy as soon as he goes in a handful of food goes in something really tasty every time that puppy is in to the point now even at 14 weeks he is trying to jump in it which is driving me mad but at the same time i have created value for him to get in it it's important because we travel a lot in the car so it's important for him to want to get in it so when he is old he can fly in it i just catch him on the way up and i know when to go but he will literally see my boot open and fly to it because i've just kept rewarding for being in there i've got a nice bed in there as well i've left him with, i've had him in chews in there and um, that you can gnaw on for his teething he's got a nice he's got um, a water bowl great water bowl it's like a travel one so it can't spill when you're traveling along so even on warm days when you're traveling your dog is access to water because for me it's really important they always have water in their crates with them when they're traveling because like i said i travel everywhere so i build value in that then it's the coming out so obviously i'm doing it with puppy at the moment who i'll do the, the, the demo with because sid knows it but i'll also show you with where you can get to with sid um so with jimmy you'll see in the video and i'll talk you through how i do the process so you understand it as well as when i do it um I'm teaching Jimmy at the moment not to rush out because he, like I've said previously, for those who've watched a couple of videos of, of me talking of Jimmy, Jimmy is quite an impulsive little puppy. Where Sid was quite laid back, he'd be like, yeah, I can just sit here, don't bother me. But Jimmy is way more impulsive. So everything takes a little bit longer, especially when it's self-control exercises because he's like a keen bean. So with coming out the car or with the crate open, and I don't want J Jimmy, if I allowed it to happen, Jimmy would be a real force of a uh force to reckon with if i didn't start with it now i could see it straight off because because he just loves loves people and loves saying hello so um i i don't want him to always think that when the crate comes open when i approach yes it's nice to have a little wiggle at me but then i get him to calm down a minute because i also don't want him to come in that mindset of, ah, out so i get him to calm down i wait for him to offer a sit back i let him know well done some dogs it depends on the dog i might pay him through the crate so i'll show you show it doing a bit of that as well so i'm paying them even before i've opened it yep that's what i want then i will see i'll approach my hand if at any point he gets up i take my hand away this is saying to him to open that crate or open that door you have to remain steady okay whether that's sit or stand depend on, like i said always with your training read your dog so for jimmy he offers a little sit right so if he sits back right i'm back on and then I get to open it. If I open it and he gets up, because even the sound of things opening can trigger them, boom, up, I'm off. Take a minute, reset him back up, go in. If he sits back, brilliant. Because for me, I, with him, I don't need to pay for him. It's just coming out and seeing me or coming out the car is exciting enough. So I don't always need to pay. But if I had a dog that was a real 
that it was more than that or it wasn't me they wanted to get out or whatever some dogs i would give that extra if they were quite struggling a little bit i would give that feedback also what i would do if i had a dog was struggling so with jimmy i didn't do expect the crate open on the first try i just wanted first to sit as i put my hand on and i thought right jimmy and i call him out then i want to be able to turn it he could sit back so i think so my progression onto that was can i turn it and he sits back if he doesn't i moved and then they did right jimmy then i opened just a little bit wait for him to sit back yeah so i built it up for him because like i said he's very impulsive but some you'd be able to pretty much straight off be like sid was very much like that you could pretty much say one thing to basically just move your hand and go i've got you i know exactly what you want where jimmy's a bit like come on like that so so I've got to the turning bit. Now what I'll do is I'll put it on a slight ajar. If he gets up, I start to close it really steady. I'm not going to slam this, by the way, in the dog's face. Okay, that's just not nice. It's not pleasant. Um, it's just nice and calm back towards. Okay, like I said, you're going to get... If it, you're doing this with a larger dog, that's where food will probably be because your large dog is going to be more forceful. Okay, so if they've not had that impulse control before, that's where your food will help. So it'd be like, as you're about to open feed in, yep. Yeah, feeding yeah so then being, you're, you're basically rewarding them for staying where they are so when i do work with adult dogs with car control i use a hell of a lot of food because i'm reinforcing them for being in the car stay there stay there stay there stay there it doesn't matter what the door's doing you stay there where with a puppy it's pretty quick because they haven't learned that i can do that from straight off so i start to move a jar any point he comes forward i slowly close it back down so he goes oh right okay when, it, when I was sat, it started to open. When I got up, it closed on me. That's what we're teaching them. They want that to open, they want to come out. So that's what the reward is for him. So then I open it again. She's there, he's there, he's there. Bang, right, say his name, Jimmy. Pick him up, bring him on the floor, pay him on the floor. Okay, so they sort of get the habit as well that they don't always run off. Because a lot of people just do that bit and the dog's gone. So when they come onto the floor, I'm paying them. Yep, 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 yep. That's what I wanted from you. And then I'd be back in. So it'd be not always meaning coming out of the car because you could be pulling up somewhere, doing a long journey. You need to wee them. You don't want them to think they're just straight off. Yep. And I also teach them that habit when you come out, connect with me, not out there. Okay. Especially, on, especially in environmental focused dogs. And I start in quiet areas, obviously like in my car park at work, it's nice and neutral, it's quiet, there's not a lot of distractions about, so I can really work on it. Um, but I broke it right down, and like I said, it depends on the dog. So for him, he's quite happy, he's, he learned pretty quick. But if I was doing a, a, a dog that I'm undoing history of, so a dog that has learned, all they've ever known is the owner just grabs them and picks it and like, or puts the leader out the door. Yeah, because sometimes people don't know how to do car control, so you can't always blame them when the dog... Or well, they're catching it under the boot. That's quite a classic. They catch it under the boot like that. Boom. Got him. I've got him. Have you got him? You got him? Like that. Boom. Yeah, you got him, Sandra. Woo. No offense, Sandra, by the way. Yeah, so then they're wrestling, but they're not sure how to get to that point, you know, because sometimes a lot of people don't ask for it. If I see it in my car park, I might say to people, right, would you like to work on that? And then they go, oh, God, yeah. So we get working on, you know, so... And then they feel better because the dog comes out a lot calmer. Okay, once that starts things, and then you have to do that next stage before they they take off. Because there are going to be times where some of them are, and again, it's like it will probably be more adolescence and stuff where they just want to go and pee and stuff like that. And you have to take that into account that that's always going to be more challenging. So the more quiet areas you can build up first, and then they come out. And what you can do is once they've sat and paid and before you take them somewhere and that you can see they're wanting to go and maybe mark or wee or whatever, just go, go wee. Because I put my wee on cue with puppies as soon as I tell them, go wee. So whenever I go somewhere, I can get them to wee quickly. I always put it on put it on cue. Put your toilet in on cue because it makes your life a lot easier. Right, go for a wee. That's for me. That's what I say. The dog wees. All right. I know we're going to subject a bit, but it's good for you to know when you're coming out the car and if you're thinking, I just want them to do that. Um... So what you'll see in this following clip is me, how I'm doing it with Jimmy, and then I'll see what you can get to with Sid, okay? How I bring them out, what I want, what I'm looking for when they're coming out of the back of the car. So I hope you enjoy the clip, and um, yeah, hope you have some coming out cool dogs. 
coming out of the car yeah i got this you can open it walk around it you'll look it'll look great for you but it's also it doesn't matter about looking great it's you've got that control back in areas where you might need okay so that was car control i hope you enjoy your trading clip bye okay so this is how we are going to teach the dogs to come out calmly um out of the car um learning not to fly out the car oh city oh city learning not to fly out the car and come out calmly and not rushing dragging us pulling us anything like that basically so i'm going to do this with little jimmy because he'll be more honest in the in in the video so you can see how i work through that he's he's still learning that calmness and steadiness of coming out where Sid is more the end product which I'll show you anyway but I want you to see, see the process of Jimmy what I'm looking for and I'll talk you through if you can't exactly quite see him in there and it's quite a tricky angle um, but you can listen to the process of what he's doing in the crate okay but you'll get to see um, a puppy still learning how to come out of the crate nice and calmly in the back of the car because like I said in the video um, to this clip before it's really important we want this self-control we want to be able to open it up feel like we can trust them and they not come out okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it with Jimmy okay by the way, excuse the back of my car. It's the dog's area. As long as they're in cleaning air, this can be muddy. Right, so there we go. Right, okay, so you can now see. Here is little Jimmy. Jimmy's excited. I've approached the crate. He's a young puppy. He's like, oh, am I coming out? What are you doing, mum? Everything like that. Currently, at the moment, he's in a sit. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start the process. So I'm going to go towards my clips he's still in the sit very good any point he comes forward i will close the things so there he's come forward right so i went back back and closed it good lad So there, just because I'm going to my pocket with food doesn't mean come out, okay? I closed it. I'm going to pay him in there. And I'm paying him again. Building value. So if he comes forward, what I do is I just go back. I haven't really start. So he's in a stand at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for him to offer that sit. Good boy. So he's just sat. That got up perfect for you to see. Okay, so he's just got up. And I went to close it again. For that, I'm going to reward him. So like I said, this is what I'll be doing as well with um, an adult dog. Is building value and staying in the crate. And I'm not rushing him to come out yet. But if in the early stages with Jimmy, so I'll just close again. In the early stages with him, I couldn't even put my hand, I'd put my hand on him, be up. And I just worked on, my hand doesn't even approach until you sat. Then I got to this. If he got up, it went off. And then I'd bring him, I had to break it right down from because like I said, he was impulsive. So read your dog. Some will read it right breaking down into little snippets. Others, you'll be straight off the bat. You'll probably be pretty quick that they're learning that. Okay, to get that open, I've got to sit back where he was just like, I just want to see you. Okay, and that's fine. And I want that from him. But at the same time, I want him to come out calmer. Okay, he can have a little wiggle at the bottom with me. But for now, I want him to come out nice and calm. When he does come out, he will not be on lead. I'm in a safe area here, so I come off. Because he's still doing, getting used to the lead. I don't want to freak him out while I'm just learning this exercise. But again, if you're doing this with a young puppy, do it somewhere where you know you can be secure. If you've got a collar on him, you can put him on a little collar. Because also you want to get him used to putting the lead on, which I'll show with Sid. 
uh, so that they can also get used to the league going on in there and not out here but for now because I've got where I am I'm safe enough to do that and just work on this because that was his priority if I think if because he was so impulsive if I had added the lead in that earlier it would have stressed him out he would have got bitey and I don't need to create that problem okay so even then, if he comes forwards, I start to move it. He's learning that come forwards if he comes forwards. Jimmy. That for him means come out, good boy, Jimmy. Yay! And then I pay straight away on the floor, good boy. So he thinks every time I come out, I face you, not go off, good boy. And I'm paying him quite a lot for that. And then what I might do, because I want to go back in, <laughs> I don't do lift your puppy. But you can see I was telling you about I built value in the car, okay. And you see how I feed him, my bit's very small, but something tasty because I've built value in there. So you get to see that side of things. But you could see then how we broke it down every little stage. Like I said, read the dog in front of you if you've got an impulsive one. Break it down, pay him in the crate if you have to, while the door is shut. Yeah, so every little stage. So I wait for him to sit. So now he's stood because he's had some food. Pay him again in there. So I'm not teaching him to rush out. Jimmy, good boy. <laughs> and that's the joy. That's what happens when you build value in your car. But that's what I want. I'd rather them go back in my car when they get out, some which what he used to do a lot of. When I get somewhere, he. If I stay at the back, he will hover, he'll go out, he'll sniff, he'll jump back in because he knows until I literally walk him off to stay near the car, okay? So then it ends up like... So I put the lead on, nice and safely, he's not pushing past me. Yep, bring him out, good boy. Yeah, so it's that there. I've got that nice and calm, I'm not being battled, okay? And I can sometimes even practice if you want, depending on your dog, to even sit there with them a minute while the lead's on, that they don't have to run straight out, okay? I don't want that. I want that dog to to come in, uh, to come out nice and calmly, not be dragging them everywhere. Because that's it. Okay, so we've opened up. So if you want to do progress to that, you leave the lead on a minute and then I just pay in that, pay in there. So I'm keeping it in the crate, so that means don't go past the line. Good boy, well done, mister. Good boy. And like then, that's a, he is a 14 month old adolescent male, right? The first thing they want to do is get their nose to the ground. That's why he went out. I just wanted him to connect with me, and then I might say, okay, go for a week, go after that, all right? So that is car control. Good boy.